Would you believe me if I told you that the most successful football club in the Moldova National Division didn't consider itself to be part of Moldova? Maybe you would. After all, Monaco are one of the most successful teams in France's top flight, and they're not based in France. Meanwhile, Wellington Phoenix finished third in the A-League last season, despite not being based in Australia. The difference between those two and the most successful team in Moldova's top flight, however, is that Monaco and Wellington Phoenix are both from internationally recognised independent states. The same cannot be said for Sheriff Tiraspol, winners of the Moldova National Division in 18 out of the last 20 seasons, who have represented Moldova on the European stage for the last two decades and have won 12 of their opening 12 league games so far this season. You may or may not have heard of the Pridnistrovian Moldavian Republic, and if you have, you've most likely heard it referred to by its more common name of Transnistria. I first became aware of the unrecognised Republic, as I first become aware of most things, through the lens of football, when Sheriff Tiraspol were drawn in the same Europa League group as Spurs in the 2013-14 season. During the first game between the two clubs, in which Tottenham won 2-0 in Tiraspol, the commentators alluded to the fact that Sheriff were based in a disputed territory, and that the region had previously declared independence from Moldova, although they didn't expand a great deal more than that. Naturally, I spent the rest of that evening reading up on the history of Transnistria and how the region's unusual political context came into being, and I've had a strange fascination with both the club and the de facto state ever since. You won't find Transnistria on most maps, since the nation is unrecognised by the international community, who consider it to be part of Moldova. But here it is. A tiny landlocked slither of land sandwiched between Ukraine and Moldova, on the banks of the River Dniester, Transnistria acts just like any other independent state. The country has its own currency, passports and army, in addition to a national football team that is unrecognised by either FIFA or UEFA. Crucially though, Transnistria doesn't have its own football league. They plan to, around the same time that they created their own versions of everything else, but textiles magnate and chairman of local club Tiligal Taraspol, Grigori Korzen, lobbied against the idea. He wanted Transnistrian clubs to compete in Moldova's top flight, and that is exactly what they have done with great success over the last 28 years. The region's political situation has been a complex one for more than a century. The land was seized by Imperial Russia following the Russo-Turkish War at the start of the 1800s, but it was returned to Moldova following Russia's defeat in the Crimean War roughly half a century on. Russia regained control in 1878 in exchange for the Balkan region of the Bruja, but following the Russian Revolution in 1917, the region declared itself as the Moldavian Democratic Republic. Romanian troops intervened in 1918, and the Republic's Parliamentary Assembly declared a union with Romania, which didn't sit particularly well with the Soviet Union. At the start of World War II, the Soviet Union offered Romania an ultimatum to withdraw troops from the region, but Romania refused. The Red Army subsequently rolled into town, returning the region into the hands of Soviet Russia, although their control would be short. Romania spent most of World War II on the side of the Axis powers, and in 1941, the Axis powers took control of the Bessarabia region during an invasion of the Soviet Union. The tide of the war turned over the next few years, though. Romania switched allegiances over to the Allies, and the Soviet Union regained control of the region in 1944. The political scene in Transnistria became a little more stable over the next 40 years, up until the policies of Perestroika and Glasnost implemented by Mikhail Gorbachev. Gorbachev sought to allow more liberalism and regional autonomy within the Soviet Union, but if you give the people an inch, they'll take a mile, and nationalist movements began to spring up in many Soviet republics. Transnistria's population is ethnically diverse, divided into roughly one-third Russian, one-third Romanian, and one-third Ukrainian. As Moldova developed closer ties with Romania towards the end of the 1980s, support for the region's nationalist parties grew, and they began to win elections. In September 1990, the Pridnistrovian Moldavian Soviet Socialist Republic became, as its name would suggest, a new Soviet Republic, but the Soviet Union itself would soon come crashing down. War broke out between pro-independence Transnistrian forces, supported by Russia, and Moldovan forces, supported by Romania. Although a ceasefire was declared in July 1992, the conflict was left unresolved, and Transnistria has essentially been stuck in limbo ever since. As a result, the region is often described as having been frozen in time, with Soviet relics decorating the nation and Soviet buildings still standing tall. If Transnistria were ever to gain international recognition, it would become the only nation-state with a flag still bearing the famous hammer and sickle.
Indeed, the hammer and sickle symbol can be found throughout Transnistria, not just on the nation's flag. And there is an enormous statue of Vladimir Lenin outside of Transnistria's parliamentary building in the heart of Tiraspol. It isn't the only statue of Lenin in Transnistria, there are busts of the revolutionary throughout the unrecognised state, and you don't have to look too far to see the odd monument or image of Yosef Stalin as well. As you drive into the city of Tiraspol, which is internationally recognised as the second largest city in Moldova, and is the de facto capital of Transnistria, you'll even find a T-34 Soviet tank proudly displayed upon a plinth. Oddly enough, it isn't the case that the people of Transnistria are devout communists who remain loyal to the ideals of Leninism. You might find the odd old person in Tiraspol who would still pledge allegiances to the man who overthrew the Tsar, but by and large, Transnistrians aren't particularly fussed about political allegiances. Most citizens bear no ill will towards Moldova, Romania, Russia, or anywhere or anyone for that matter. The Soviet imagery is largely a nod to Transnistria's pride in their past and what they have overcome as well as being a sign of the lack of redevelopment and investment in the region due to its precarious political predicament. Transnistria receives economic support from Russia, most notably in the form of virtually free energy supplies and the financing of state pensions. There are also 1,500 Russian troops permanently stationed in Transnistria, supposedly there to keep the peace. Despite Russian support, Transnistria is crippled economically by Moldovan and Ukrainian blockades. Whilst people pass freely between Moldova and Transnistria in particular, often by bus, the movement of goods has long been restricted. This puts a huge strain on businesses in Transnistria when it comes to imports and exports, and there have also been restrictions placed on Transnistria's central bank by the international banking community. Whilst parts of Transnistria do appear as though they have been frozen in time, the region has modernised in recent years. There is perhaps no finer monument to Transnistria's attempts to modernise than the Sheriff Stadium in Tiraspol, first opened in 2002 and subsequently renovated in 2011. Part of the wider Sheriff Sports Complex, which covers 100 acres of land in total, the Sheriff Stadium has a capacity of just shy of 13,000, and it is accompanied by the smaller multi-purpose Malaya Arena, which has just over 8,000 seats. There's also an indoor venue, a soccer school, and even a residential development for the share of Tiraspol players. As I speak, a five-star hotel on the same site is under construction, all funded by the Sheriff Company, which is the second largest in Transnistria and has come to dominate the nation's footballing scene. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, despite its myriad of problems, Tiraspol has had a vibrant football scene. At one time, Tiraspol had three representatives in the 10-team top flight of Moldovan football before the success of Sheriff drove two of them out of business. Even today, there are two teams from Tiraspol in Moldova's top flight, namely Sheriff and Dinamo, and Sheriff have become the dominant force within Moldovan football. Originally founded in 1996 as FC Tiras Tiraspol, but renamed FC Sheriff Tiraspol in 1997, the club won promotion during its first two seasons in existence. It took them just three seasons in the top flight to claim their first league title, thus beginning a run of 10 straight league titles. Since their first title in 2001, Sheriff have only failed to be crowned league champions twice, once in 2011 and once in 2015. It's a level of domestic dominance almost unrivaled throughout European football, and it has been achieved with one of the most cosmopolitan squads in world football. Sheriff may be a club without a country, but they are also a club which has represented virtually every country on earth. The current Sheriff squad boasts players from 18 different nationalities, and 19 if one were to recognise Transnistria as being independent of Moldova. Among them are internationals from Malawi, Zimbabwe, Liberia, Finland, Greece, and Trinidad and Tobago. The contrast between Sheriff Tiraspol and every other Moldovan club, but also Sheriff and the region of Transnistria in general, could not be much greater. The club stands as a beacon of modernity with plush training facilities and an entire stadium complex which cost $200 million to build, whilst no other Moldovan club even owns their own ground. Sheriff's reserve team, the perfect tool for developing the club's young players, has won six second-tier titles, denied promotion solely due to a club's reserve team not being allowed to compete in the same division as the first team. Despite tensions often flaring up between Tiraspol and Chisinau, football has been a rare example of success and collaboration between Transnistria and Moldova. Whilst the international community often appears to make assumptions regarding the ill will of Transnistrian people towards others, football has shown the majority of the divided separation of states to be a political creation not borne out by genuine individual differences. 
Transnistria has been locked in a state of near purgatory for so long that any kind of breakthrough or development seems to have lost all momentum. In 2006, there was a referendum in which the people of Transnistria were asked to vote in favour of either independence and integration with the Russian Federation, or renouncing independence and becoming part of Moldova. There was a 78.5% turnout, with almost 97% support for independence and closer ties with Russia, rather than Moldova. Nonetheless, as far as most of the world is concerned, Transnistria remains part of Moldova. The sad truth is that whilst the future of Transnistria remains uncertain, as it has done for the last 30 years, the population continues to shrink. The poor economic outlook brought on by blockades and uncertainty has seen the region's population decline by a third over the last 25 years. Whilst Transnistria's major football team, namely Sheriff, wins all before them, already looking near certainties to claim a 19th league title this season, the region itself will continue to struggle until a more stable and internationally recognised situation takes hold. The situation in Transnistria is far more complex and nuanced than I could ever bear out in a 10 or 15 minute video, but it is one that has always intrigued me, so after I saw a soldier request for a video about Sheriff Terra Sport and the region in general, I jumped at the chance. Ultimately, the outlook for both club and region is actually pretty bleak. By virtue of their total dominance, Sheriff have sucked a lot of the life out of Moldovan football. All but one team that was in the top flight of Moldovan football when Sheriff first won promotion has either been relegated or ceased to exist over the last 20 years. The one exception, Zimbru from Moldova's capital, looked fairly likely to be relegated this season. Sheriff's average attendances have been declining in each of the last three seasons, and despite their state-of-the-art ground and immense success, the formality of winning every game and the predictability of their inevitable title at the end of every season has seen crowds dwindle to less than 1,000 on average. Tiraspol is a city full of monuments, and in many respects, the city's football club stands as a monument to the dangers of monopoly and the importance of competition in football, a problem which is reflected in so much of Eastern Europe, from Ukraine to Bulgaria, where a footballing power shift has occurred since the days of the Soviet Union, with one team becoming almost tediously dominant. That's it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it, I'd love to have had more time to delve into the topic and explain a little more in depth, and hopefully one day I'll be able to make slightly fewer but higher quality videos than I do now. Please do hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video nonetheless, leave any thoughts down below in the comments, and feel free to subscribe to HITC7. Oh, and as always, you can also find me on social media via the username at HITC7s on both Twitter and Instagram.